and good evening. My name is Philip Rutgers and I am a writer whose favorite place on earth is London. Today I would like to take you on a journey that will lead us literally into hell and deeply into the heart of London. This video or series of videos will follow the protagonists of the comic From Hell through London. It takes us on a journey through the British capital visiting locations that are connected to the occult and mythological history of London. The tour is taken in chapter 4 of the book and leads us along monuments and obelisks, long forgotten but historically important sites and churches. At the end of the journey, if you connect all the destinations on a map and draw lines and connect them, a huge pentagram will reveal itself across the city. So, are you ready to follow me and awake some ancient pagan powers now? To clarify things. This journey is part of my book London and its Genius Loci, A Journey Beyond Time and Place, in which I try to find the spirit of place of this greatest city in the world. For this I look at the capital's history and take tours along certain sites, but I also take a look at how the spirit of place is represented in London fiction. I also included Alan Moore's and Eddie Campbell's comic From Hell. The comic deals with the Jack the Ripper murders and is based upon the royal conspiracy theory in which the royal physician Dr. William Gull is the Ripper. It has to be noted that in the comics Sir William Gull believes that he serves a greater mission, trying to reinforce the symbols of male power over those of female power. In his greatly researched work Alan Moore includes London's architecture and history as part of the theory. For example, the churches of architect Nicholas Hawksmore are essential to the story. Hawksmore was an architect and an apprentice to Sir Christopher Wren, the greatest British architect whose masterpiece is St. Paul's Cathedral. After the Great Fire of London in 1666, a commission decided to build new churches in places of demolished ones and Hawksmore was commissioned to design these churches. He was influenced by a variety of religious architecture and therefore included pagan symbols such as pyramids and obelisks in his works. The six churches he designed are St. Alfred's Church in Greenwich, St. George's Church in Bloomsbury, Christ Church in Spitalfields, St. George in the East in Wapping, St. Mary Woolnoth and St. Anne's Limehouse. He also co-designed two with architect John James. St. Luke Old Street and St. John Horsley Down. Over the years many crimes happened around these churches. This is not fictional. The Hawksmoor churches are indeed historically connected to crime and murder. Author Ian Sinclair points out these connections in his work Lud Heat from 1974 and Peter Aykroyd used the mythology surrounding Hawksmoor and his churches as a basis for his novel Hawksmoor from 1985. Hawksmoor's churches include many pagan symbols and many a writer thinks that the architect designed them specifically to be beacons of power of old and ancient religions in an enlightened era. It was also Ian Sinclair who, on a map, connected Hawksmoor's churches with several other buildings in London to form a pentagram and thinks their positioning was no coincidence. Alan Moore includes all these ideas in From Hell and adds his own interpretation. So, to understand the genius Loki in From Hell, we will follow two of the main characters, Dr. William Gull and coachman John Natley, on one of their journeys through London. I am going to take you on a journey through London and through London's history to show you, as Gull puts it, that our destiny is inscribed upon the streets. If you ever plan to do this journey, this is a perfect preparation. And even if you do not wish to do exactly this route, you will get to learn a lot about certain places in London. The ideas presented are not mine. I merely demonstrate what Moore put together. This is just how symbolism works. Symbols only work in context. They depend on your own interpretation and on your own story. You read places like the streets of London in the way that they fit your personal story. This is why something like the genius Loki works. This is why certain places speak to their inhabitants and influence them. So, come with me. Let us worship the devil a bit. My starting point was Bond Street. I started quite early in the morning. I left the tube station Bond Street and went south to Davis Street. This is Mayfair, where the rich people lived 
and live. I turned into Brook Street and looked for number 74. I found it soon. The front had not changed much. This is where the real Dr. William Gallet lived and where the journey starts in the comic. I tried to get into the fictional character of Gull leaving his house for the tour that lay ahead and stood at the front door facing the street. I basically waited for the coach to pull up and for the inhabitants to call the police because there was some strange character lurking around on their doorstep. I walked up Brook Street. Note the two blue plaques about Friedrich Händel and Jimi Hendrix living next door to each other, although in very different times. Walk towards Regent Street and then to Oxford Circus. The idea is to avoid the tube because Gull and Natalie did the tour with a horse-drawn cart. To see and experience all the places you have to travel over ground. The closest thing to a coach nowadays is a bus. So all the travels I did that day were either by bus or on foot. I had planned my tour and had looked up the bus number, number 73, but I didn't know where it departed. So I ran around Oxford Circus for about half an hour, swearing and thinking that my tour would be over before it really started. Maybe something didn't want me to fulfill the mission and to take the tour. In the end I found the right stop. Stop OJ in Great Titchfield Street. I took the front seat upstairs whenever I could during this day to come as close as possible to the feeling of a coach ride. Also, this is where you see the most of the city. In it itself, says, a great world, you will read. A thing of many levels and complexities. It too is symbol, history and myth. Gull asks Netley about the legend of the goddess Diana. If she is a myth, a symbol, history. Diana is as a symbol associated with the seven stars and therefore the guide of unconsciousness. Also, these seven were the seven oxen that turned the mill of the sky, the driving force of time itself. Another possibility is that Diana was not only a symbol or a fairy tale, but really existed. Moore refers to the historian Diodorus Siculus, who states that the moon goddess Selene and the sun god Helios were once mortal prince and princess of ancient Atlantis. If Atlantis were a folk myth surrounding the culture of ancient Crete, as some commentators have suggested, then it may be that the sun god and his sister the moon goddess were deified rulers. One strand of evidence in support of this theory is that the goddess Artemis, yet another name for the same lunar deity, is said to have been Cretan in origin. We reached the busy King's Cross station. I did not enter the station, but went to the backside. Here is Battlebridge Place. Battlebridge Place lies at the foot of Parliament Hill, where, according to Gull, Druids sacrificed to the sun. Battlebridge Road, the first stop of Gull and Netley, does not exist anymore, just as the Victorian tenements there were here. This is, according to Gull, the place where Queen Boudicca, who burned down the city during Rome's reign, allegedly died. I wondered if J.K. Rowling knew about the legend of her being buried underneath Platform 10 when she wrote Harry Potter. Enter Platform 9 three quarters and you jump across her grave. So, that was it for today. Next week we're going to continue our journey and go to London Fields in Hackney. This journey is part of my book London and its Genius Loci, a journey beyond time and place in which I try to find the spirit of place of this greatest city in the world. I know it must have been a bit confusing, this first video, but things will become a bit clearer by the end of the whole tour, so stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, learned something about certain places in London. If you wish to hear more stories and connections, subscribe to my channel, visit my website or buy my book. And if you want to hear something about a special place, feel free to get in touch with me. Thank you very much. My name is Philipp Röttgast. See you around.